Okay, beautiful people of Ghana and beyond. Um, you're welcome to Time with Mr. Insure on Insure TV. Today we're very privileged to have um, with us here um, a man of God. He's married. Um, very, very industrious and entrepreneur. He has all the qualities, but he is here. I'm going to allow him to introduce himself properly. You're welcome, both. Thank you, Mishra. Yeah, I'm Richard Pra. Um, I love sharing the word of God, so you can call me an evangelist. So, so we, we, we're privileged to have evangelist Richard Pra. Um, and he's also the CEO. Um, City of Gold Jewelers. Inside here, Kumase um, is it Ahujo Dabain. That is where the office is. We are so happy to have you, sir. Happy to have you as well. So, sir, quickly, quickly, tell us, um, tell us a little bit about you. A little bit about. You. There's so much about me, but um, a little, a little will be that. Um, as I've said earlier on, my name is Evangelist Richard Pra. Um, I'm very young, as you can see. I'm married, and um, I'm a businessman. Um, I'm into adding value to gold, which is uh, our raw material. So I make jewelry out of gold and silver. Yeah, I'm a father of two. That's great, that's great, that's great. So, um, how did all of these things start? Um, in terms of the jewelry um, business, some years ago, 96, I was in church and uh, an announcement was made where somebody who had a jewelry shop, that was uh, Pearl Jewelry then, wanted three... SS, SS uh, graduates to train. So um, we were three who went for an interview. Um, I was the only one who was able to make it. So I started from Pearl Jewelry as an apprentice and then I had the opportunity to also further my education because I had already started jewelry. Um, I continued in that line, that is, I attended uh, College of Jewelry and then moved also to College of Arts. And then um, in the year 2002, I came out of school. Okay. And then um, I worked with Pearl Jewelry for almost seven months and then moved to another jewelry shop and then also had the opportunity also to work with uh, Precious Minerals Marketing Company, which is PMMC, which is owned by the government. And then uh, I worked with them for also seven years. All through those times, I was also preparing to set up. So the least money I would make, I will invest it, that is by buying one, two, or the other. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. And um, you see, this is one of the challenges the youth have. Growing up, was it that rosy? No, 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 no. No. Um, I was uh, born into a family um, where six children. My dad married um, two wives. My mom is the second. And then in total, the children of my dad were 10. And then that caused us to struggle a lot. So it wasn't rosy from infancy. But one thing that has always been with me and is still with me, I've always, even from childhood, seen myself as uh, there's something great in me. So throughout my life, I wasn't satisfied with anything. I've done so many works, uh, menial jobs, I've done uh, shoe shine, that's um, yeah, cleaning shoes and polishing shoes, um, and then I know how to sew torn shoes and all that, and then um, I've sold um, 
so we call it silver shine abrasives okay. I used to carry them on my head and go around selling them so I could get something to buy maybe a shoe or something for Christmas um, I've been a house boy that's a cleaner house help. yes ha house help before uh, I've been a gardener before I've been into so many things so many things until um, I um, I got to where I am. I've done radio. I'm still into radio. Um, I've been with Capital Radio, uh, Solid um, FM, and then I've moved radio uh, around. I've, I've been moving around. Um, now I'm a permanent uh, panel member with um, Adeshia FM. I go to Kumasi FM too as well, and then. I go to places and also preach the gospel. Wow, wow, wow. So um, the main purpose for us coming here today is to empower the youth. As he's sharing his life, I believe you can take a cue out of it. He's saying a lot. He's gone through all the hustle, you know, shining shoes, being a gardener, all kind of things. Sometimes, you know, most of us, we just see people in their cars and we feel like it just started one day. But Mr. Pra is here today to tell us that it is not that, that so. Sir, um, what do you make of the youth today? They normally, they believe that um, in terms of job creation, um, government is not doing right. The government is not doing more. And for that reason, they, they just stay there in their homes waiting for government to create jobs. What kind of advice do you give such of such of uh, youth like this? Who has this opinion? I I strongly believe that the youth of today are looking up to government so much for opportunities. But in all fairness, I think I don't blame them so much. It is the form of um, our educational structure that is causing us. Um, the youth to be looking up to the government for jobs, but that has to change. It is us, the youth, that should look for opportunities around us. Opportunities abound so much. Ghana, I mean, we are not well developed so much, but who develop it? It is us, the youth, finding opportunities around us. For, um, for instance, there is not much recycling uh, companies around. We can do our search, go to, today we have internet, we have YouTube and all that. Any information you want, you can get it. When you have um, tertiary education or even up to SHS, where you can read and write, what you need to do is just look at your environment. The problems you see around, it is when we try to solve them by that, that we can create jobs. I believe what we need is just an idea. Many of the youth, when you ask them why they are unemployed, they will give you stories. Nobody has given them money. Nobody has supported them. And they think it's money, money, money. Well, money is part of it. But what you really need is just an idea. That idea, when it's well put on paper, will bring you the needed investment. For instance, when I started um, working as a jeweler, Nobody, I can tell you, no family member, no friend gave me money to start, that take this and start something, no. But I had the skill, I had the idea, and then I've worked with companies, so I could do one or two things, and then sell. And then the money I make, reinvest it, little by little, and Many of us too who are from school and think we have a big idea is good. But sometimes we need to also learn how to work for people. By working for people, people will get to know that you are into this. I've been to this jewelry shop. Okay, you were the jeweler there. By so doing, you are networking. People get to know. They've seen works. Okay. So they will have that confidence 
in you to give you money that, okay, get me an earring. After you are able to produce that, the next job will come. So if you go around picking these uh, polythene bags that today has become a very big problem to us, okay. you go around picking them, you go on the net, look for how to recycle. I'm sure even if you need some machines, there will be some basic things that you can start with until when you save up or somebody sees that potential, that person will put his or her money there. Zapra, normally you, you get people saying that um, some of these things, I don't even have the money to start. So how do I even start? Because it's, it's kind of heartbreaking when you meet these people and they say that, uh, how can you start a business in Ghana? Uh, how do, uh, you don't even have the expertise. Even if you have the expertise, the money to start, it's a problem. Yes, that's when I said that we need to be able to work with people. For instance, I am already established. Okay. What can you do? Is it in line with my work? Is it marketing? Is it um, manufacturing? Is it sales? What can you do that you think will help my business? Walk in, tell me you are ready to do this even for free. But when you come and you are looking for a job and expect that I should pay you per month, if there's no vacancy, I cannot employ you. But if you come with an idea that will help my product to sell faster, definitely I'll buy into it. I'm here to sell. So you can also walk into somebody's shop when you go to um, a doom or this city center and somebody has a shop and you have an idea you are good in selling or marketing go talk to the person build trust when the person trusts you you can do business you are in business but if you don't move and you are at home and expecting to get a white collar job or government should employ you then uh, you'll be home for a very long time mr pra can you make it big in ghana without dubious means Yes, I, I, there are many people that have made it big in Ghana without any dubious means. Many, many. We are quick to think that anybody who has made it today or who has money just went for some juju or something. Personally, somebody told me, I was just driving past and I heard somebody say, Sakawa. They, that is what is in the minds of people. They believe you can make genuine money. But there are people who are doing genuine businesses. You can make it big by being genuine. People will trust you. When you are fraudulent, your time is just limited. You can only do p people up to a certain time. You'll be found out. But I've been in this business for 10 years, and I'm going to be in it for long. I'm not in to cut corners. My customers can attest to that fact. When I say I will get this ring done in one week, I must make sure one week it's ready for you one week. Talking about truth, I think I, I, it, I was about asking you something else. But, you know, one, one of the things I think they used you today is not talking about not doing well is honesty. What advice would you give to us outside? Because some of us use, you know, even the ones that have something doing, sometimes you go to him to buy his or his service and it's like he, I mean, he will tell you to come tomorrow, today he's there, you go, he's not there and all those things. It's, it's really killing businesses. What advice would you give to such people? That side of uh, most of the um, artisans or those of us that use our hands in working has become a problem for many of us. They don't keep to time. They will tell you it will be done in three days. One month you don't get your work. We are not truthful. We are not honest. You see, one aspect is I'm the one going to do 
your ring for you. I know that this ring will take three days. I should be truthful enough to tell you it will be ready in three days. But there's that human factor. Anything can happen. So if it can be done in three days, why don't I add two days? And then if nothing happens and in three days I'm done, I call you that I'm done. You'll be much happier than to tell you it will be ready in two days, then in one week it's not ready. When you are able to get your job, you are not coming back because I wasn't truthful, I wasn't honest. So honesty is something that uh, many of our youth are lacking. In, 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 in the journey of business, what is that one thing that nearly got you say, Charlie, I give up? Um, so many, but I will only talk of one. You know, uh, my business is money, and the um, the shop was robbed. That was uh, when uh, five years ago, and it really, really got to me. But um, I did not give up. So that has been. Uh, the biggest problem. So what I learned from that robbery incident was to make sure that security is tight. Many of us take our security for granted. We trust people so easily. Yeah. So um, no matter what you are doing, it's your investment. Invest more in securing your job that is the area, if it's a shop, a container, whatever it is, make sure it is well secured. Because if you have one CD there and it's not stolen, that one CD in some few years will be 100,000. But if you are unable to secure and every one month or here and then it is stolen, people will not trust you. Because if I bring you my goal to work on it and you tell me it has been stolen, you have been careless. In your earlier submission, you made mention of the fact that um, there are many, many, many opportunities around. And that includes the technology we have now and also social media. What do you think the youth can take advantage of social media for? Yes. You see, when today we are quick to use the social media to destroy people. Let somebody see that I'm working with a woman or a girl. They are easily to capture and put it out there, see what this person is doing. A but man. a married man, just to destroy. The media is also on that lane, uh, part of it. But the social media g gives us the world. It, when you have your phone, it is the world in your hand, the world in your hand. I can sit here and know a program that is going on or a seminar and even take part, sit here in Dubai and take part in a seminar that is going on in US or Dubai or wherever. Anything that I need more information on, I can just Google and get more information. So when we use Facebook, WhatsApp, to sell our products instead of many of these uh, unnecessary videos and gossips that we share about, it's not helpful. There's more to the social media that we can get than uh, we are doing. I think we are not gaining much. Use it to study. Follow people, businessmen, follow their writings. Even on Facebook or social, uh, WhatsApp or whatever, they are all part of the social media. Use it to uh, improve on your writing. You can be a writer, you can write books by getting information, motivational messages, or there's so much that we stand to gain from the social media. I think um, he has really elaborated on that and I'm so, so, so happy because um, Social media, as he said, is um, very, very, very strong. One of the strongest tools we have now is social media. And most of us youth try to use it um, negatively, which is not good. So I believe we can use it positively and it's going to help us. But Mr. Pratt, let me come back to you. Um, let's see. Um, you normally hear people say that marry early and grow with your children. 
What do you think? Me, as a youth, I don't even have money. I don't even, I, I'm just living in a one room, I don't know, you know, a one room apartment. And people are telling me, get married, and marriage comes with blessings and all those things. What education can you give to us on that? <sighs> I have always been uh, saying that I cannot use my marriage to define what marriage is. But we can use the word of God. It is good to marry. When you marry early, knowing that um, you have a job to do, you have, I, I, I don't think the size of your room really matters, but you must have a job to do because when you are a young man and you marry, you are going for somebody's daughter. You need to take care of that person. Children will come in. You need to give good education to your children. So you must have um, some job to do. You must have work to do. That will earn you something. No matter the amount, um, you should have a job to do. And the lady too must be um, a marriage material. Today, I see many of the youth, not just the ladies, who are so much into fashion, fashion, and um, this life trying to impress people, but you have your life to live. You see, when you marry early and you know you are giving birth to two children or three children, and you, are, you give yourself five or six years time, you are God willing, you have this number of children you want. You can concentrate and then bring them up in the way that I think you would be happy. And then when you get to maybe your 50s, um, imagine when you are 50 and you have a child who is 20, which means that child is even uh, um, out of the tertiary education or has learned a trade. Then you have the world, if you will be 70 years, you have 20 years to enjoy. But one mistake the youth also make is, though, I need this, I need a house, I need a car, I need this, I need this before you marry. Um, when are you going to settle down? By 40? Maybe if I get those things and um, at least a, a, a certain standard. You see, sometimes um, if you don't get to a certain standard, like you rightly said, you're going to take somebody's daughter to take care of the person's daughter and all that. And you come and even sometimes what to eat is a problem. And you see, it's, it's kind of worrying. Um, you are talking as if someone who has such an experience. But the truth is, marry when you know within yourself that you can take care of somebody's daughter. And that lady must also be working. That lady must also be em employed because if I'm working for somebody, I may, I don't know the future, I may also lose my job or even if I'm working for myself, anything can happen. So the lady must also be in a position to take care. So the little, your little, my little, your one, my one becomes two. Do you understand? So we can do something. When even you are living in a small apartment, definitely if you set your priorities right, you should be able to, um, in the near future, get your own pro uh, plot of land, start building, and you move into your own house. Personally, when I got married, I was living in a one-room apartment with my own small kitchen, my uh, washroom, you know, but today God has been very kind to me. I'm living in my own house at my own age. I say this in all humility because it is God. So I would advise anybody to also marry um, if you think you are in the right frame of mind. Mm, mm, mm. You know, once again, you're welcome to Time with Mr. Nshira on Nshira TV. Um, Mr. Richard Pra, CEO of um, City of Gold Jewelers inside Ahonjo Dabain. He's the one we're talking about we're talking about here, and he's really educating us. We're so, so, so happy to have him. Sir, let me hit you with this. Can you tell us how you met your wife? Ah, I met my wife in church. 
I'm an usher in church. She is also an usher. So um, one midweek service, that's on Wednesday evening, we were seated very, very close, just after me. And um, we, whilst the preaching was going on, we exchanged numbers. And I took, That was a fast one. And then I took it from there. So that's how I met my wife in church. So it was in church. Wow. So um, how many children? I have twin girls. They are eight years now. Twin. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. God bless you. God bless you. So is your parents still around? I lost my dad when I was in primary four. That was in 92. And then uh, my mom is still alive and doing very well. And your mom must be so, so, so proud of you. Like I said, I am with Mr. Richard K. Pra. He prefers to be called evangelist. Evangelist Richard K. Pra is here. And he is actually in charge, the CEO, the boss of City of Gold Jewelers inside Kumase Ahojo Dabain. We've had a nice chat with him. He's, he's, he's taking us through education. He's taking us through ideas, in-depth ones. As such and we are so 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 happy we thank you so much sir for the opportunity he's also taking us through education on how things are done here like he said one thing I really picked was that maybe he may not be able to employ you because there's no vacancy but if you come as a youth that said I want to come to you at least show me how you do things teach me let me learn from you that is a nice way of getting to the business than just coming to say that I'm looking for a job definitely or even come with an idea okay I'm good at as a marketer I'm good as a promoter I can come he's willing to support you and it cuts across everywhere not just here uh, in city of gold alone but anywhere people will be uh, ready to support you we are so 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 happy and we we, we say God richly bless you, God bless you for sir. whatever you are doing Amen. we know you are, you you are you have just amazed us because I I saw it from outside and I was like okay um, city of gold and so what and but in fact after I got in here I have come to realize that we can do it we can do it and I believe he has said it that we can do it so wherever you are as a youth be inspired by this our, our program go to our youtube page and then follow us on insure tv ghana facebook insure tv ghana and you catch us live once again we'll be moving from places to places we are catching up base with all the entrepreneurs young people who are doing it so 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 well in our society and even across the country everywhere in the world we thank you and we say bye bye for now mm -hmm.